Have you ever stopped at a red light and there was no other traffic around? And then you wonder to yourself, how is it possible in this age of connectivity and real-time everything that this still happens so often? We can put people on the moon, send rovers to Mars, do heart surgery as a matter of routine, but we can't get in our cars and drive 10 blocks without getting stuck in traffic? What if instead you could get into your car, tell your phone or your car where you're going, and then most, if not all, of the traffic signals along the way would be green for you? How much better would that be? How would that change your life? The technology to do this exists, and it's already on the road in a few places. All you need to use it is a smartphone, and it's not just for fire trucks and ambulances. It's for you and me as well. You see, traffic signals operate largely in the dark. They don't really know what's going on. They don't have any real idea about how many vehicles are on the road, where they are, how fast they're going, or where they're going. So how can signal timing possibly be optimized to match the actual needs. It can't. Not in its present state. At each signalized intersection, what you're likely to find is a metal cabinet. And inside that cabinet is a controller, a computer that operates the actual traffic lights. And all it has is a number of light switches that can be set to red or green in some combination to let traffic safely move through the intersection. That's the easy part. The hard part is knowing which directions to set to green or to give a walk signal and for how long in a way that matches the actual traffic. And a good solution to this problem is potentially worth tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars because that's how much we waste each year sitting in traffic. So some intersections run on a fixed timer, and that's just what it sounds like. It's green in a certain direction for a predetermined amount of time, changes to yellow, and then red, and then switches to green in another direction for a predetermined amount of time. And then it just repeats that sequence. And that schedule, that sequence, is based on historical demand. Typically, this means somebody from the local city or county counted traffic around that intersection for several days or weeks, and then used that information to create the schedule. And so it runs like this, completely blind to reality. Now, we all know that you can't step into the same proverbial river twice because everything is constantly changing. So the chance that traffic flow captured by one snapshot in time is ever going to occur quite the same way again is really, really low. Now, that doesn't mean that traffic doesn't ebb and flow according to some rough pattern or approximate pattern and trend over the course of a day or a week. But a snapshot is definitely not precise enough to do what we want. So the ability to detect traffic in real time is crucial to reducing congestion. And that allows us to then adjust the signal timing right, on the basis of a present reality rather than just guessing. And many, many intersections do have sensors for doing just that. Generally, they're inductive loops that are embedded in the pavement, or radar, or some type of camera that's connected to the controller. So if these are widely used already, why is traffic not getting better? And the answer is because we don't have enough information when we need it. First of all, these sensors are still struggling with the most basic task which is to 
detect and count traffic as it goes by. And depending on a wide variety of conditions, for example, sun glare, fog, vehicle speed, how close the vehicles are together, the results can vary tremendously. On top of that, these can't tell us the intent of each vehicle, like where it's going. And then you, on top of that, there's not enough advance notice. Because generally, these sensors are located around the intersection. And at most, they have a range of several hundred feet. So by the time they can detect the vehicle, the controller is really limited in how it can respond because it doesn't have much time. When the car is far away or a vehicle is far away from the intersection, there's plenty of time. We have options. Where we have options, we have better solutions. Here, we have a dumpster fire. We have a crisis. There's no time to respond. And then it happens in the other direction, and another, and another. And pretty much, the controller just says to each direction, sorry, you're going to have to wait. I'm still dealing with all these other surprises. And then it never catches up because as long as there's traffic, it keeps getting surprised. And that's just one intersection. So then this problem repeats across other nearby intersections. And as soon as the traffic volume picks up a little bit, the whole thing goes to pot. So limited sensors and a lack of advance notice are two of the reasons, the major reasons, why traffic is the way it is. So how do we fix this? Here's what we need. More information ahead of time and to be confident that it's accurate. So how we get more information is simply with more and better sensors. And the smartphone is a really good sensor. It can tell us things like where a vehicle is, its speed, its route information, and a whole plethora of other variables, and it can do this well ahead, well in advance of when we need it, something that fixed sensors can't do. So once we really know what's going on, when we have a clear sense of how many vehicles are on the road, when each vehicle is expected to be at each intersection, which directions they're coming from, which directions they're going through, now we can start to adjust the signal timing to match the actual vehicle movements. And that's exactly what my team and I have developed. We've created an app and hardware. The app, of course, resides in the smartphone, provides information to this hardware, and this hardware is connected to the controllers. So now we can tell the controllers in advance what's going to happen. Now the controller has options, better solutions. So we've already installed this. It's up and running in a handful of intersections on real roads in the real world. And we've been able to demonstrate a reduction in travel time through each intersection somewhere in the range of 24 to 37%. It's amazing how much time you save when you don't have to stop for a red light. So this is a necessary and crucial foundational step, but it's only half the battle. Because now we're talking about what's going to happen minutes into the future. So how do we know when and if a vehicle is actually going to go through an intersection? How can we be confident of that? And it comes down to one thing. And that one thing is predictability. There are many ways that we can define this, and there are even more ways that we can gauge and measure that. Things like, where is a vehicle? How fast it's moving? How fast is it accelerating or decelerating? But to keep it really simple, 
the key question is essentially, is a vehicle, and therefore the driver, going to be where they're expected to be when they're expected to be there? But we all know that human drivers in general aren't really good, and they're more distracted now than ever before. And so they tend to be quite unpredictable when they're out on the roads, and that's a big problem. And they have no reason to change. Because the only feedback that they get right now are vague sticks, no carrots. The risk of accidents, congestion, tickets. And sticks are not good motivators. At the same time, there's no mechanism in place to guide and reward drivers. So what do we do? We ask them to be more predictable by providing guidance and rewarding them with carrots. And the carrots are green lights. More predictable drivers make the problems easier to solve. The drivers get more green lights, so they keep driving better, making it possible for the system to give them more green lights, which sets up a virtuous cycle that reinforces itself. And that's how we solve the traffic congestion. We make the traffic lights smarter, we get more information and better information ahead of time, and then we guide and reward the drivers to be more predictable. So you remember earlier when I asked you to imagine getting in your car, telling your car or your phone where you're going, and then most, if not all, the lights will be green for you? That's the first step. That's how drivers can begin to help bring this vision to life. The vision of making it possible, making nonstop mobility possible for everyone. And I'll leave you with this, which is your reality is going to change. It's going to shift from one of experiencing stress, of trying to beat the light at each intersection, to one of knowing that the light is green for you. Thank you.